Welcome to how to make a sports highlight reel with smartphone video. This is a practical tutorial that will not distract nor overwhelm you with unnecessary information. Let's get right to it and start by opening Adobe Premiere. Click the new project button to bring up the new project dialog. Select HDV, to match the HD video measurements of your source smartphone video, type in a name for your project, and click OK. The new sequence dialog then comes up. Select widescreen 32 kHz and review the settings that are configured with this choice on the right. Click OK, and Premiere's primary interface launches. The main menus are at the top here. We now need to import some footage to work with. Click on File, then from there, click on Import. In the Import dialog, navigate to the movie files you want to use. MP4 is the movie file format most often used in smartphones. I'm selecting two files to import. Select the files and click OK. The files show up here in the bin. You can change the names of the clips here. To add a video or sound clip or other element in the bin to the timeline, click it and drag it from the bin to an empty track on the timeline. Most of the upper right third of the user interface is taken up by the preview window. The preview window shows the frame where the playhead is at on the timeline in the viewer. Scanning through the footage and looking for highlights, I may use any of the controls here. I see a section that I like and am adding markers in the timeline by pressing the asterisk button on my keyboard, which is above the number 9 on the keypad section of your keyboard. Shift plus 8 will create a marker wherever the playhead is on the timeline, as well. Right click on a marker to see its context menu. In the marker context menu go to sequence marker. In its submenu, click on clear current to delete the current marker. Double click on the first marker to bring up the marker dialog. Name the marker and click OK. Going through your footage can take some time, and you should know that going in. We are fast forwarding through some of my scanning and selecting of appropriate video. Having multiple camera angles of the same event is a great way to add interest and value to your work. However we have only one camera angle, from only one game in this case. What makes it worthwhile is that Marlin is the starting point guard and a pretty good one, at that. So even with only smartphone footage from one camera from only one game, there should still be plenty of highlights to work with. After choosing and marking the in and out points of sections we like from our source footage, we'll begin cutting out what we like from the video on the timeline. With the playhead at one of the markers, go to the tools pane and click on the razor tool to select it. Bring the cursor back to the line the playhead makes across the video and audio tracks click on the line, to make a cut there at that marker. To precisely navigate on the timeline, you can mouse up to the menus at the top. Find the marker menu, and go to sequence marker and from its submenu click on go to next to jump exactly to the next marker. Alternatively, you can hold down control and click the right or left button, control plus right or control plus left, to move back and forth, precisely, and quickly, between markers on the timeline. more scrubbing back and forth through sections of the video, deciding exactly where to make a cut. If you're the precise type, this may take a little longer. You can see the audio meters that visualize the audio level of the clip currently playing in the timeline. I do not go deeply into audio mixing in Premiere in this tutorial. I dare say it's rather powerful though. I encourage you to explore audio in Premiere more on your own. Here I have fast forwarded through the rest of my process for selecting the parts of the first clip that I want to use for the reel.
you can select multiple clips in the timeline by clicking and dragging a selection area around them. This helps when moving clips about the timeline, as I'm doing here, to remove some of the now empty space. Now that I have the highlight clips from the first file cut out and all together here on the timeline, I want to bring in the second video file from the bin to work on. So I'm going to lock the audio and video tracks that I currently have edited media on. Next we're dragging the second video clip from the bin to the empty track on the timeline. Navigate to and click on the effects tab above the bin. Expand the audio transitions folder and the video transitions folder by clicking on the triangular twirly next to them. Expand the crossfade folder in the video transitions folder and the dissolve folder in the video transitions folder. To apply a transition, click and drag it from the bin down onto the timeline at the beginning or ending of the clip, or between two adjacent clips. Drag the cross dissolve transition from the dissolve folder onto the timeline and place it at the beginning of the first video clip. Then drag the constant power from the crossfade folder in the audio transitions folder to the timeline and add it to the beginning of the audio. Now let's add a title to this. In this case I want the title to be showing from the beginning and have the first clip and audio fade in underneath it. I want the title to then fade out. Go to file, then new, and then click title. The new title dialog appears. Click OK and the title editing dialog appears. Select the text tool, click into the stage window, and then click on the color square in the settings section to bring up the color picker dialog. Select white and then type in your title text. I have jumped ahead here a bit and you can see where a transition has been applied to the end of the title on the timeline here. In the bin, you can see the new color mat that I created by going to file, new and then clicking color mat. In the color mat dialog, I selected white and clicked OK and it became visible in the bin. With a white background, you can create a flash cut that flashes white between clips for a more stylized look to your finished product. First move the video clips onto the track above by selecting them all and then dragging them up a track. Then drag the white color mat from the bin onto the timeline, in the track below the clips. In the timeline, mouse over the right end of the color mat and drag it out until it is as long as your work area on the timeline. Now we can refine the position and transitions of elements on the timeline, even deleting or rearranging the order of the clips on our timelines. I'm still experimenting with the order of the clips on the timeline here. Here I have fast forwarded, I'm examining how this clip fades up from white and I'm not sure I still like this idea. I'm still experimenting with the idea of a flash cut between clips, but I'm liking it less and less. Here I have fast forwarded, click the eyeball in the track menu to make the track with the white color mat invisible. I'm not sure if I'm keeping, so I don't want to delete it yet. By the way, any layer with the visibility turned off is ignored when the project is saved out into one file, rendered. I notice that the audio is not coming through on the this clip. Click the twirly next to the track in the track menu, in the timeline window. You can now see the yellow line that indicates the volume level. Click on it and drag it up to increase the volume for the selected clip. I continue to adjust the clip lengths. Here I have fast forwarded through the rest of the selecting and cutting clips out process. The clips are a bit scattered about the timeline, note there is no space between the clips, horizontally, on the timeline. The flash cut idea has been totally abandoned. Now what's a highlight reel without a good music track to tie it all together? To import more media, an audio file, in this case, follow the same steps that we use to import the movie files. Click file, then import. Navigate to the song you want to use and click open. The song shows up in the bin. To add an empty audio track, right click on the last audio track and select add track from the context menu.
the Add Tracks dialog appears. You can add as many tracks as you like. We're only adding one here. Drag the file from the bin to the new empty audio track on the timeline. Listening to the music, I realize it has a very long build up, almost a full minute before the beat picks up. I want the music to begin later on in the song. To shorten the song, I could use the razor tool and cut it, but if I grab the left side of the audio file in the timeline and drag it right, it has the same effect as cutting that part off and deleting it. The crescendo of the music now rises to the first beats of the song while the title is displayed and the real action begins just as the music hits its increased tempo. That is what we wanted. The work area is defined by the bar at the top of the timeline window. Only what is below the work area bar and has its visibility on will be rendered on export. It is probably a good idea to make sure of it before exporting the movie. Here, I previously added transitions that I'm now removing. To remove a transition, right click on it and select clear. After fidgeting with the timeline, I am adding transitions to these clips. The other clips, past the work area, are ones that I have decided that I don't want in the video. Drag the right side of the selected music clip left to shorten it to the work area length and then add a fade out transition. Ok, let's export the movie with selections, transitions, positioning, and music track out to one mp4 that we can then share with others. Go to file, export, and click on media and the export settings dialog appears. Review the settings, we're going with the defaults. In the format drop-down, ensure H.264 is selected for maximum playback compatibility. Next, click on the output name file name link to name and save the rendered file in a location of your choosing. Click export at the bottom of the export settings dialog when you are satisfied with your settings. The encoding or rendering progress is shown. Rendering is complete for our new reel and we are taken back to the user interface. From the desktop. Let's navigate to and play our new reel as an outro for this tutorial. Congratulations, you just made a highlight reel. I'm Frank Mixon, thank you.